Oakley Doakley folks, welcome back. Last episode, we fought Boba Fett, uh, we fought a Penguin, and we fought Storm Eagle. So now we're going to move on to... Let's see, who's next? Um, obviously, I'm not doing the rotation that most people probably do when they're playing this, because uh, I'm not basing it on the pulse weaknesses. But... I think... Normally, I think I actually do end up fighting the men like that anyway, because I, I actually forget what Storm Eagle's weakness is, but it's from a boss that's much harder than he is, so... Yeah, it's from... from Stink Million. But, anywho. Alright, so moving on, why don't we go try and take on the Mammoth? So, he's... I don't know, I always considered him kind of underwhelming. He looks really derpy. Also... I don't really think fire is an appropriate element for a mammoth, right? I mean, like, Chill Penguin, he's a penguin because he is, you know, he's designed to operate in the cold and all that shit. Makes sense, it fits thematically. Yet, a mammoth is an animal mostly known from its existence during the Ice Age. So... Why is he fire? Oh, one thing I'll point out is when, um, some of the, with some of the bosses, once they've been defeated, um, they actually end up having an impact on each other's stages. Like, uh, I beat Chill Penguin, so this right here is solid, but normally that's actually lava. Um, I actually, I don't have a complete list of exactly what all the changes do, but you'll, I'll, I'll try and point out the effects if I notice them. I'll go a little bit for our sub tank. Okay, so right here, here is the here is the arm upgrade. It can be a little frustrating to get to, but not too bad. You just got to be persistent with it. There we go. And then once you once you grab on, just keep spam wall jumping. All right, and now you get the arm upgrade, which is, I mean, I guess I'd say the leg upgrade's the best one because the enhanced mobility is so fucking helpful. But this one's also pretty nice. This is like pretty much the the reason that you get the head upgrade. Ah, I am still trying to remember though. Where is the body upgrade? Okay, so here's our. Our next level charge. So what the what the um, arm upgrade lets you do is lets you fire a charge shot that is one charge level higher, so it does even more damage. And it's this purple doom beam. Um, and the other thing it lets you do is charge up boss weapons, which gives them a new effect. So I'll be demonstrating some of those to you guys. But I don't know. In general, I'm not used to using the boss weapons all that much, even though they are pretty fun. So here's another fun little item. It's a heart over in that corner. And I think there's actually also a sub-tank in this level. I think this is one of the ones that has three items. I believe it is on... Bitch! Man, I'm getting killed by robot miners. That guy's right at the beginning of the platform, too. It's hard to get to him. There we go. And then there's the sub tank there. Nice, and then we get two sub tanks. We got a heart. We got the. Um, we got the arm upgrade. We got everything we need. Excellent. So let's continue moving on forward. Toward Flame Mammoth. Maybe, maybe they named him Flame Mammoth because, you know, mammoths are, they're woolly, they're warm. But, if you think about it, a penguin is also a pretty warm animal because it relies on thick levels of blubber to insulate itself from the horrific cold of the Arctic. And I am one of those kinds of people who, like, I fucking hate the cold. I hate the cold so much. I really fucking despise it. All those people are like, oh man, I can't wait for winter. I'm like, 
are you even human? And the answer is no. Actually, people uh, people who like winter weather are technically descended from woolly mammoths and represent a slightly different genealogy than most humans. Yeah. I also have a degree in uh, evolutionary biology, as you can probably tell. That's right, I'm a PhD. I'm not just Knox, I'm Doc Knox. Alright, so now we're going to try and fight Flame Mammoth. So he's pretty easy. He, uh... He sprays oil, he shoots fire, and his biggest thing is just that he he jumps, and if you're on the floor, it um, fucks you up. Pretty sure it's the floor. It might be the wall, too. So, we'll have to find out. Look at him. He just looks fucking ridiculous. Yep, looks like it's just the floor. Oh, he can also reverse the direction of a little conveyor belt. All in all, I also consider him a bit of a pushover boss. Some of the bosses in this game are reasonably challenging. It's not an overall super difficult game. Like, if I end up getting killed, I'm gonna really mostly own that up to my own badness. Ooh. Like, um, X2 is pretty similar in terms of difficulty. Actually, I think X2 is probably a little bit easier. Because in this one, the, the final form for uh, Sigma, the last boss, is pretty fucking difficult. Um, nowhere near X3, though. X3 is fucking nuts. The jump in difficulty there is... It really took me by surprise the first time I played it. Because I was used to, you know, by that time I'd also, I'd played X2 a shit ton, like I had like all the muscle memory down, so I was used to just sort of wrecking shit. And then I got my ass beat like a red-headed stepchild, and it took me very much unawares. Alright, so as we can see, he's not exactly a difficult boss. Just kind of jump over him. Stay on the wall when he jumps over to you, jump over to him, shoot him, dash away. Um, and he's actually kind of like Blizzard Buffalo, um, from X3 in that regard. Oh, shit, I dashed, I went through too quick. Um, so he gives you a move that's just a flamethrower. So I'm just gonna show you a fun thing we can do with it. You can get yourself a little item with it in, uh, Chill Penguins level. So just kind of run through here, some as before. Death beam. Yeah, we just kind of run through here, same as before, and then uh, toward the toward the ending part, like right before those little robot snow throwers, there's a part where you need to use the flamethrower to melt an igloo, and inside is a heart. Isn't video game logic great? Not this time, motherfucker. I'm your death! Okay, I didn't kill all of them, but that still felt... That felt really rewarding. That felt much better. That was cathartic. Although I think they say catharsis actually... Like, the idea of, like, you know, like, getting it out of you... I think they say that's actually not how it works. Like, it usually um, ends up just kind of building up bad habits. Bitch. Bitch. Alright. There we go. And now I just melt this, and yeah, there's the heart. Nice. Alright, so now we can just exit. Bling! 
you can see uh, the subtanks. I don't know if I covered this. Um, you saw it briefly in the screen. What the subtanks do is, if you're already at max health and you pick up a health pellet, it'll store the health for you, and you can use it at a later point to refill your um, health bar. Okay, so who comes next? Um, not you, not you, not you. I guess I'm gonna kill this monkey. I'm coming for you, Harambe. That's the new lore for Spark Mandrill. They resurrected uh, Harambe in the future as a cyborg. And once again, Harambe's got his hands on a little kid. And it's Mega Man X, I value the lives of human children more than I do apes. And I was facing the wrong direction there. Okay, so another fun little stage effect is, uh... When you defeat Storm Eagle, I don't know if you saw back there, but there's actually the whole bits of his ship crash down. And apparently it seems to have disrupted the power plant, because now we have this flickering thing of the power is going on and off. But fortunately we have Neon Robot Fish to light up the sky for us. And more of those strangely designed buzzsaw headed chickens. Oh, and then this mini boss. Oh my god, I hate this thing. Alright, so this thing's not really all too difficult. It's just tedious. Especially if uh, once you have the power off, it can't do its attack. It's trying to like, shoot the lightning bolts. But it cannot as I have removed the power. So you guys can probably hear the little like da 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 That's that thing hitting again and again and again. One of the things that makes the tornado so powerful is that it just hits the enemy over and over. In addition to just doing a good amount of damage, Die already! There we go. Like, this thing has as much health as a fucking boss! And now we get to part two of the level. Look, look at that! Robot turret. So much better. Makes so much more sense than snowball throwing robots. I'm just saying. Whoever designed a lot of this shit, they need to they need to be fired. I'm just gonna run past these turrets and kill that little drill guy. And then fight this turtle this tortoise bomb factory. Okay, so here's a heart you can get to. It's gonna take me a couple tries to get this one. There we go. So to get to that one, you have to um, dash and jump simultaneously off the wall, and that'll give you enough distance that you go over, and then you just sort of steer yourself in midair back to the platform and grab onto it. There's another one, I think. I think, I think there's one in Boomer Kawanger's stage, who's a guy that we'll see later on. And I think in his, there's one that you can do the same trick with. Um, I usually just wait until I get the boomerang cutter from him and just come back to his level. Because it's much more convenient. But if you're feeling really stylish, I'll try and point it out. And I would definitely advise um, a lot of people to play these games. Like I know they're I know they're old, but they are really fucking fun. And maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but these are the kind of games that I really think of most when I think of gaming. All right, so now we have a big bad. Harambe has returned.
There we go. So, I did not do that one by any means in an expert way. Um, but I still prevailed. Notes for improvement in the future. Uh, remember that if he punches the wall, you actually fall off. Um, and then you not only take damage from the wall punch, but then you end up touching him, and that deals damage, because all enemy robots are covered in robo-poison. Alright, so that's our next two. And let's see, I can probably fit one more in here. Who might go after the next? Well, now that I have this, I'm gonna take care of this motherfucker. Alright, Armored Armadillo. Which sounds a little bit redundant, quite frankly. I mean, isn't that kind of what you know an armadillo for? Being armored? But I'm just being pedantic. No need for such pettiness. Oh! That guy, you see this bat over here? That one is a special bat. He's actually from the original Mega Man series. He makes a little cameo here. And the fun thing about him is that he drops a light, an extra life very often. So if you're low on lives and you want to stock up, just come back here, kill him, move off screen so he respawns, and then, you know, allow to rinse and repeat. things about the supercharged up shot is that you actually have, it does a little bit of an attack behind you too. Alright, so this guy. Alright, so now we're going to go down and we're just going to do one of these big ass tunnel boring machines. And god damn this thing. That thing will fucking wreck you. If you get hit by its little rock crushing portion, that thing will wreck you. But, it melts pretty easily when you use the flamethrower. I'm not usually a big fan of flamethrowers in games. But in this one, it works pretty well. And as a reward for defeating it, I get to claim these. Because otherwise he'll destroy this platform here and you can't get to it. This one's somewhat inconsequential. There's one later on though, there's a second machine, and if you don't destroy it before it gets to the platform, it'll remove your ability to gain an extra heart. So that's a regular whole section. Which is really annoying. I hate having to redo things. It's like having to renew my license to the DMV. Like, why do I get to do this? I had to stand here when I was like 17 or 18 and get this shit done. Why are you making me waste my time again? Come on. I got more important shit to do. Like, literally anything else. And he's dying, and he's dying. This part's fun. Little minecart. Okay, so let's pull our flamethrower out again. Because this right here is the portion that leads to the next machine. There we go. Man, he went down quick. This thing's a fucking beast. I think it's a lot like the tornado in that I don't really know if they get iframes for it. So let's see. Here we go. Here's our glorious extra heart. So by now we actually already have a pretty considerable health bar. If you're really good, like really good, and you get the bosses, you know, frames and animations and everything down, obviously you can do this... I, I, you can do this game without getting hit, frankly. Aside from the vile fight in the beginning, or the, the Boba Fett fight, where he has to hit you so that you get um, stunned and everything. The second one, you, you fight him again, same thing with the right armor. You can't beat him, so you have to let him hit you until you get really low on health and he'll tase you, but I wouldn't really count that. Aside from that, I, you know, if you're good, you can beat this whole game without getting hit. But I'm not that good. So, I'm beating them without the boss weapons. For this guy, I'm just gonna do one thing, because otherwise this gets incredibly fucking tedious. 
So he has armor on that allow him to deflect your shots. And it just makes it take more time. He doesn't really get too much harder. But if you hit him... Oh my god. You motherfucker. Holy shit! You little bitch! Wow! You heard me talking shit about him. I was really thrown off. I was really expecting to be able to just hit him with the electric thing as the fight starts. But he opened up with a different move. I also don't know why he has a gun in his forehead. It seems like a very, very unusual place to store a weapon. Whoever designed him, I had some serious questions for you. Stop shooting things out of your head. He only has one nipple. He has one robo nipple. Why would you design a robot with nipples? The only reason mammals have nipples is because we need to use them to nurse our young. And if you were going to have nipples, here, so fun fact, you can tell the average litter size of an animal or a mammal um, by taking the number, it's you know, that its number of nipples and dividing by two. Like dogs have six nipples. And on average, dogs have, like, three babies. Humans have two nipples. On average, we have, you know, one baby. He's only got one. If I were to half that, that's half a baby. How does he produce half babies? What does half a baby mean? Oh, Armored Armadillo, you're fascinating. I could muse about you forever, and in doing so, uncover the secrets of the universe. Or I could just keep jumping here in a corner and wait for you to stop shooting things out of your forehead. No! Oh, so close. Yeah, I got really, really fucking wrecked in the beginning. I just got really thrown off because I was not expecting him to deflect the uh, lightning beam. Alright, so let's try this again. Take two. You know, I'm surprised that the armor upgrade isn't in his level. That would seem thematically appropriate, right? There we go. Now this will be a little easier. Although admittedly, he looks a lot less cool without his armor. Not that he looks incredibly cool with it, but now he looks like... He's like a shaved dog. Don't ask me why I know what a shaved dog looks like. There are many, many strange things I'm aware of. He's just continuing his little brainstorm attack.
So this game's soundtrack is pretty good. The, the first three games have a great soundtrack. Uh, from four, four is like okay, but Mega Man X5, mm, my god. Whoever composed that fucking knew what they were doing, I'll tell you that much. And I perfected that one. Uh, I guess it just took me a second to get used to the pattern. Anyway, there we have it. That's uh, Armored Armadillo. And let's see what the Armored Armadillo is with what he gives us. Because I forget what this weapon's called. Rolling shield, okay. Oh, hot pink. Classy. Alright, so I think that'll be it for this episode. Thank you very much, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and I'll be coming back next time to finish off the final three Mavericks. And then after that, we're going to move on to the Sigma's Fortress stages. So, stay tuned, guys.